Hi guys and welcome to the video we're calling Two British Guys Try East Coast IPAs and Collectively Lose Their Shit. A few weeks ago I went on a road trip to learn more about the brewing revolution taking hold in northeastern America, where brewers are tearing up the West Coast IPA rulebook by brewing low bitterness, beyond hazy, ultra fruity IPAs. Now, that's a lot of adjectives, but describing these India Pale Ales, which are made using special yeasts, grains and dry hopping techniques, is very difficult indeed, as the Brad and I found when we sat down to taste my favourites from the trip. So what we're going to do is we're going to try these amazing beers, and we're going to see how it differs from the West Coast, how the yeast, how the cloudiness, how the new hybrid hops are making a difference and making it an entirely different proposition to the piney, citrusy West Coast beers. So we're going to start with a beer we've already experienced. Yep. So this is Heady Topper. It is, as far as I know, the beer that kind of started it all. It's hazy. It's made with a special uh, bastardised uh, British yeast that adds loads and loads of esters, fruity smells from the yeast, on top of being hot to hell. Um, so this is slightly different to the others in that it is quite bitter. I think it's 85 IBU, Ooh, uh, International nice. Bittering Unit, uh, which means it will have a tang. Um, we know it says drink from the can, but uh, <laughs> I don't trust Brad and where he's been. It's got some murk in there, hasn't it? It's definitely got some murk. It's not as murky as the others, but it is kind of like a cloudy apple juice kind of colour. Um, I immediately remember that smell. It's like a very, it's like a slightly diluted kind of um, fruit and barley kind of smell. Uh, yeah. On top of that, then you have that citrus stuff going on. More bitter than I remember. Mm, definitely. Oh, it's, the mouth feels amazing. Though. Yeah, yeah, it is perfectly, perfectly made. Just sort of bounces off the tongue. Mm. Um, it's got lots of body, but it sort of, I don't know, like foams up in your mouth, uh, which is pretty incredible. I can share that. Yeah. Yeah, loads of those stone fruits. Lots of citrus, quite piney, which we don't, I don't think we'll get from these other guys. So it's, it's quite a different beer, but you can see whether the Vom Vermont yeast is doing something. Right, yeah. So we are bizarrely lucky in that we've had the Heady, and we have two beers that I'm actually more excited about drinking. I can't say that too often. <laughs> no. So Trillium are from Boston, uh, which is also famous for lobster rolls and the TV show Cheers. We went to the Cheers bar, don't. <laughs> Um, Don't say that. I love Cheers, <laughs> man. I sat in Norm's seat. Did you? I couldn't remember which one was Norm. Congress Street. Uh, it's kind of the Trillium signature. Yeah. Um, we picked this up uh, from their taproom tasting room, uh, which is just by where Boston Tea Party happened, basically. Oh, so yeah. I threw some tea in the water. Yeah. Fake tea. Mm. Yeah, they all do have that kind of lemon and barley thing going on. I think. It, it's a little bit more focus on, on, on oats and on wheat mm. that lightens the aroma. It's not got the stickiness that malt can have. It smells great. It also just smells like walking down the fruit aisle. Mm. Yeah. It's chocolate, isn't it? And a really big part of this style yeah. is there's no bitterness. Very little bitterness. Yeah. Now you mention it. So it's nuanced, it dances around on your palate, it's it's delicate, but it hits yeah. you in the face as well, but it doesn't hang it's, around. It's, it's it's hugely complex, but you just want to sling it back, and that's something that beer has over wine, over whiskey, yeah. all these other things. It can be as complex as any whiskey, any red wine, but you still just want to drink it and drink it and drink it. So in the video that's coming up, I road trip from Philadelphia, where I was at the craft beer conference, uh, up to Boston to try Trillium. Uh, on the way, we stopped off at Treehouse. Um, I'd only had one of their beers before, uh, and I don't know, like, I wanted to stop off there, but I wasn't hugely excited about it. And then I went there, and the place was beautiful, the people were lovely, uh, all the people buying the beer were just the friendliest people, just all so excited to actually be there, because it's a bit of a trek. Yeah. Um, it is a farm in the middle of almost nowhere. Uh, is it in the Treehouse, Johnny? There is a treehouse there, but it's not in a treehouse. It was in a barn, and now they've just—they're just upgrading to a big. I think it's 130,000 barrel brew house. Um, in a tree, yeah. No, not in a tree. But there will be another treehouse. What? And I think they said something about a fish pond as well. Okay. Yeah. Fish pond doesn't have quite the same uh, ring to it as treehouse. Fish it? pond brewery. No, that you'd expect. You'd expect some murky beer though, wouldn't you? Certainly. Um, so this is Julius, which is their flagship uh, IPA. Um, I've had it since coming back, uh, and it's just. One of your it's top beers. Just so good. It's just so good. 
I, I'm going to watch you. You were telling me this is better than Heady. It's better than Heady. It's better than Pliny. Um, I'm I super excited. I can't, I can't tell you how good this beer is. And I can't tell you how murky this beer is. Wow. Yeah, that is... That's deep sea murky right there. There's some, <laughs> there's some uh, beasts in that fish pond. There, there, could, there could be fish in there and you wouldn't know. Exactly. Um, so yeah, they, they, they get this murk. They use a particular yeast, this bastardised British yeast I mentioned, that doesn't flocculate. It doesn't come together and sink to the bottom of your fermenter. It stays in suspension along with all of the proteins from the wheat uh, and the oats that might have gone into it. Um, all of these beers. Uh, so it's like emulsified within the... Yeah, and they, together. you know, they, I, I, I don't know the science behind it. If somebody does, please, please let us know. But also I believe like the hot particles are clinging to all of these... Uh, things in suspension, so it should create a rounder, fuller flavour. Yeah, and that is the thinking behind all of these hazy, low bitterness IPAs. That's science, kids. That's science. This just smells of fruit. It's incredibly fruity. Yeah, it's like Mbongo almost. Not quite as Mbongo, but it's it's yeah, it's amazing. It's it's, it's so sweet. Like overripe mango. Yeah, it's hugely sweet. Overripe mango, peach. Um, Apricots. I get a lot of apricot from it. You get less of the, the slight grainy mm. lemon barley kind of yeah, thing. That's, With this that's one, it there. is just all in your face, tropical fruit. Amazing. Mm. You want to drink it? I'm going to give it a go. Yeah. Oh, no, a lot of fresh air. I just love it. it it's so full bodied without really becoming overbearing yeah it's so full of fruit and when you get to the point where you would get that big whack of bitterness on the swallow you get a massive hit of fruit and I don't I, I've never had a beer that's done that where you swallow and then there's more fruitiness mm. usually it's on the aroma it's on the front of the tongue but it just goes like a bubbly eruption of fruit in your mouth it's just Delectable. So the reason I wanted to talk about these beers and do a video specifically on what is quite a niche form of IPA brewing is because I think it marks a change in the way that brewers are going to approach their IPAs. Right. It used to be like a space race, like who can brew the bitterest beer, yes. who can brew the dankest beer, um, or the grapefruitiest, pithiest exactly. kind of beer. Now... The bigger, the better. Yeah. And now there's a more subtle approach. Yeah. I think there's breweries going, look, I want to drink, I love those 8-9% hugely dank bitter IPAs, but sometimes you want a really hoppy beer that's absurdly drinkable. Exactly. It's talking about brewers who are making this style. Yes. Oh! Hello! Slight plug. We brewed a beer inspired by these guys um, with Gypsy Hill, and you can click down here to see the brew day. So what I want to do now is just do a little comparison. Having had three of the best IPAs in the world, and all of them are East Coast style. I want to crack our crowler. It's a damn big crowler there. I like that. Uh, and just see how ours compares. Pretty big on the nose still though. Yeah, the aroma is quite similar. Yeah. It's very, it's, again, it hasn't got that lemon barley thing. It's all, mm. all mango. Exactly. All mango and stone fruits. Let's see if it has the body. It's not far off. What it lacks, when you swallow that and you get a hit, another hit of fruit, this one doesn't have that. It doesn't come in the second way, does it? It's no. Not quite, it doesn't quite have that, new, uh, that kind of complexity and depth, I guess. But that said, I think it's stacked up genuinely next to these two. Quite favourably. Yeah. Yeah, 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 for sure. Guys, let us know if anyone that you know uh, is brewing this kind of style of beer so that we can go out and find it. Or, you know, send us some. Send us. That'd be cool. Um, and watch out, we're going to release a homebrew uh, recipe of this. We're going to do a video and homebrew it so you guys can make it if you don't have somebody local. What? No way! Yeah, absolutely. Trade secrets? <laughs> we're giving <laughs> it away. We're, we're open source. How nice is that? Yeah. Lovely. Um, so watch out for that coming early summer. Until then, if you can, find one of these beers. They're stunning. Cheers, man. Cheers. Cheers, guys. Cheers.